Um, listening here, not knowing what the presentations are before, I think a low point for me initially was hearing Ian's presentation and flying carrots. He's got a catchphrase of the day. And actually, the number of similarities in Ian's approach is startling to what Middle and Heart have done. But actually, that's a bit of a high because I think it means we've done the right thing. On to the more serious side. Uh, Middle and Heart, we're a large housing association. We operate across... 30, we've got 32,000 homes and counting. We operate across around 50 authority areas. I really want to labour on what our purpose is about housing, care and more. And it's stressing a bit about the and more. There's lots of pressures on us. Um, people think housing fighters are flush with cash. Not always the case. Um, it's about, for ourselves, it's that value of working with those in, in greatest need. We've got a whole range of different things we do about social value. Um, we've got schemes where we work with people that are homeless in hostels, give them training through uh, about in going to bakery. We've got things where it's about uh, working with tools. We've got various different enterprises. We, we purchase furniture from small social enterprises for care and support schemes, a whole range of things. We're involved in a back-on-track tra scheme, which is about apprentices, many of whom have come from backgrounds, as described earlier, with drug, alcohol problems, chaotic family lives. The key point is there's lots we can do, but there's also a lot of things that it's probably not our place to do. And by us doing it, it's probably taken over somebody else what they're doing or something a small local business can do way better than we can do. And this is where the procurement I'm going to talk about today uh, comes about. Why am I here? One thing to point out is I'm, I'm a housing manager. I'm a head of housing service. I'm not a procurement person. And the key point around that is that it's about my responsibility, about provision of the service, about the contract management. And we led this, this process, we're going to talk about very much from what we want to deliver. All procurements that we do, we talk about um, the value for money and the financial, the environmental and the social, and that's pretty common language these days. I think the key things for ourselves is how far do we go in that procurement process when looking for that social value. We had one big contract worth, as you say, from there around two and a half million pound a year. And the contract was coming to the end and it works across multiple local authority areas. The position we were in, we found that when it had been tendered five years previous, we got the actual procurement process. All we'd really had was a, very, a huge dropout of suppliers and we'd ended up with three or four big nationals. And largely when it came down to it, it was about them trying to say they could, you know, if give them all the work, they'd knock a further amount off the price. And the position we found was, was quite narrow. In terms of that early part, then the first bit, I've got a picture there, which is about sportsmen biting each other's ears. The point I'm trying to make here is there's often internal battles to go through first to look about what you want to achieve. I've got that slide up today, and I've walked past the walkabout bar. It should have been Australian cricketers on there, I think, but it um, would have been more apt. In terms of uh, middle and heart, then, the way we wanted to do it was to break down some barriers and equally want to achieve those economies of scale. And what Ian talked about earlier was what's that risk? Because for me, people with a pound note figure, it's about, you know, big is often beautiful. And it's having those battles early on to say big isn't always beautiful and there's ways of getting those results. The next step we did was very much talking about customers and how we did the procurement. And it was really customers saying what they wanted because there's no point in deciding on the procurement process that you want to follow until you know what your customers want and those are some of the things they were talking about, quality and price, which are obvious. What was really apparent at the time, and this came not long after the social unrest, was the strong feeling that we should be doing more than just getting a contractor who does it well and does it cheap. There's really strong feelings about local employment, about people not travelling 100 miles to provide the services. And that came across really, really strongly. So one decision we took at that point was in the procurement process, we involved our customers in that, and we put them through a four-day training course. And it was very much about them being involved in the tender process so that the, our values would come across in our procurement. 
The next question was, how on earth do we attract more suppliers? And the phrase that, was, that came around was about how do we level the playing field? And the first place we went, actually, was this where the connection came with Melanie and SEWM. It was how we're going to meet more people. And it was some, this is where the similarities comes in with what Ian was talking around and his flying carrots. I wish I'd come up with the phrase myself. But that's exactly what had happened to us before, where we'd set prohibitive insurance limits that certain levels of liability had to be in place when... Um, the contractor was even completing the tender, otherwise they got thrown out the window. So we changed that to say what levels would be needed at the point of award. We also broke the contract up into, in total, around, I think it was 24 different separate contracts. And that sounds like a procurement nightmare. And the procurement team's first look at that was, what a nightmare. And the finance's first team was, what a nightmare. How many invoices, how complex is that going to be? We also um, threw out the rule book where in the past we've gone and scored on, I think we had 70% award on price before. We lowered that to 30 and we linked it very strongly to our values. We also got rid of uh, what we call multiple lot discounts. So we, we were saying to the contractor, we want you to provide your best price for that area of Coventry or Leicester or Milton Keynes. It wasn't about what you can do if you win more work. We also varied the size of the contracts enormously. So we had contracts varying from around 8,000 a year up to 250,000 pound a year indicative values. Again, that was deliberate. It's about that subject Ian mentioned earlier. It's about risk. We wanted to encourage companies that probably find Mill and Hart scary. And if we look scary, I can imagine probably what some of the local authorities look like in the room, probably far scarier than we do. It was about saying, here's an opportunity for you. How would you get that message out? The main thing we did was we had to meet the buyer day. How do we reach uh, small social enterprises? It was about using the contact list that SEM had developed, SEWM, sorry, had developed, alongside putting it out through our normal OG routes, and I think it was an advert in The Guardian from Memories. We, put our, we did that wide range of adverts. We also invited people along to meet the buyer day, and that was an opportunity just to talk and say, we're trying not to be scary, and we want to work with you. And we've done that for a couple of procurements now, one of which is still going through contract award. The results from that, I'm pleased to say, is we're now six months into working with those successful contractors. We actually saved around a million and three quarter pound over five years. I stress that's not Mill and Hart saving a million and three quarter pound. That's a million and three quarter pound out of tenants' income, whether it be benefit, their earnings, whatever. It's what comes directly from their pockets. And we feel, with, particularly with austerity, things such as shift to universal credit, that's more important than ever before, that people you know, are, get, are getting value in what they're getting. We've already got uh, the contractors. We, in, when we did the interview process, we were asking how they'd worked with uh, local business before, uh, how they worked with apprentices, what they do. Were they genuinely trying to work with apprentices? You know, such as the story that Liam's just given, or were they actually using some small enterprises as, as bid candy, quite bluntly? So we really looked at the history of working and drilled that down. We've now got some apprentices starting to work for the contractors that we've taken on, so that's a direct result. Early days, as it says there, but six months in, we've actually found our satisfaction levels with the service provided has risen. So, so far, so good. We also had a few environmental things that benefits that came out. Now, sometimes this can be the last thing to think of, and it shouldn't be. But actually, when we found when some of the smaller businesses were coming to, they came to us with real innovation. The one that stands out for me was a, a company called Greenscape, who so are actually part of the Accord Housing Group. And they've got a really innovative system about recycling water off the engines of the cars for cleaning. Haven't seen that before. I've actually said to them they have to be going out there getting some innovation awards themselves. So it's actually done by reaching social enterprise market, we've got, in, we've got some better, wider results. F from just for my closing comments, and final thoughts, um, Mill and Hart aren't perfect, and there's lots of things having gone through this that we would definitely do better again. There's definitely room that, about feedback to suppliers at the end of it. There's also a definite lesson, I think, uh, around when you, before you do that procurement, we did do the same. We massively thinned it down from scary 500-page documents. We did a lot of that already. 
And when we did the Meet the Buyer, we were in a social enterprise venue that had training on the walls um, for social enterprise about how to do procurement. That's def that was by coincidence, it wasn't by design. So it's really, I'd say, particularly for local authorities, particularly if you're looking down the shared service route, look to who you can link with to run those training events beforehand about how you submit those documents. Many got through, um, but probably half didn't get through because the paper was still daunting to them, and we've got to learn the lesson from that. Melanie talked about what she's going to do for the next six months. One thing we're looking at strategically at the minute is how we join up better the housing, health and well-being agendas, something housing is trying to get to grip with. The obvious links with health benefits to or better housing to better health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think for me, I haven't really even thought of it in how we link into the social enterprise sector, but actually that is something that could be really exciting moving forward. Thank you.